so this 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 concept is clear that british expansion was also indian resistance right yes now what happened that british expanded in india we already discussed about plassey boxar marathas sikhs slowly and gradually they they expanded in india they uh, controlled india i mean from they started from this this bengal in the east of india and then northwest they are, by now they occupied northwest which is modern day pakistan then by defeating maratha they got uh, the central and southern part and then tiku and now these areas were under their control do you understand that now this is one one way that we discussed that they expanded through wars then second was through alliances do you remember that alliances now what alliances was this war expansion is clear tell me hurry up yes sir. yes expansion sir. expansion through wars like they fought against those who resisted and british won so that that what we have already discussed so this is how they expanded now alliances were basically uh, going this way that when as you know india was into princely state this was marathas state and they were taken over in 1818 and this was sikh kingdom which was taken over in 1849 this was mysur which was taken over by the british in 1799 this was bengal in 1764 now these were the wars they fought and took over. now while india was like this there were many other princely state in india and uh, they were divided like every area was consisted of a small principal uh, princely state small or large depend upon so while these resisted there were others who made alliances mean agreements with the british now what was these agreements these were called subsidiary alliances that they willingly joined british india now this was called british india mean the india as you you remember we mentioned that 1784 british government passed a law which was known as india act and they took over the areas from the company and they called it british possession do you remember that yes sir okay now this is called british india now this was british india under the control of british british india british india and british india british india now when this was happening through wars many of the state joined british india or uh, made an agreement with them that they willingly submitted to the british and uh, they did not fight against them so in return what happened in return tipu was martyred his family suffered and empire was taken over his state was taken over by the british but nizam of hyderabad they made an alliance with uh, the british and what happened british let them retain their state and now that these rulers they were able to retain retain their states and in return to pay the british taxes and internally they were independent ruler and they became part of the british empire do you understand this this the other expansion of the british yes, now these these areas were basically directly not directly by the under the control of the british but they were under the agreement now part of british india uh, ruled by their local rulers internally but they would submit to them and pay taxes so this is called alliances subsidiary alliances that was another way that they expanded in india number 
and thirdly uh, we discussed if not i'm talking now i don't remember exactly doctrine of labs did we talk of doctrine of labs no sir we have to start. okay okay fine so we are going fine so that doctrine of labs 1852 this was nothing very simple it was a new law passed by the british and when i say new law passed by the british because british were now the rulers of at least those areas which were under their control so these areas now run by the british and they were the rulers and they passed laws in that area they they introduced their system in that area is it clear to you this concept yes sir so like when british government passed this law india act and took over and appointed a governor general who would rule these areas administer these areas so with this they established their system so now they passed a law which was known as doctrine of laps now what was doctrine doctrine of laps very simple concept now you see here two two ways uh, two different you know approaches for expansion this area sikh kingdom was directly under the control of the british but this state this state this state it was ruled by their own rulers so part of british india but not directly under the control of british india is this clear yes sir now this law was about these states and it stated this this law said that if any ruler of a princely state if any ruler of a princely state very simple law if any ruler of a princely princely state die without having a natural heir natural heir now what does natural heir mean that a real son who would succeed to the ruler i mean you know in kingdom in princely states there were no election and no parties etc so how do how how did they decide about the next ruler uh, the real son would you know come in and take now in case if a ruler had no real son which mean natural heir so what will happen to that state so british said this state now will be taken over by them it will not go to the next in line okay so it will not go to the next in line anyone like the other heirs if this doesn't have real natural heir so what will happen that this state now will be taken over by the british directly so that was the train of laps this was another you know uh, way through which they Uh, took over some other lands, grabbed more lands. So this was all about British expansion. We discussed through wars, subsidiary alliances, and doctrine of laps. But slowly and gra- gradually, starting from 1757, uh, they expanded in India, and the expansion journey was of hundred years. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now from here, our next topic also starts, and uh, this is uh, just a transition because next topic is just uh, in a way uh, in a separate chapter, third chapter, but it is the same uh, basically uh, topic. I would say the same thing which was happening in India, and that was British expansion and Indian resistance. Because that Nawab Siraj Ud-Daulah resisted against the Indian and British, Tipu resisted against the Sikh Marathas. So, uh, but they were defeated and their areas came under their control. So that was British India now. So we are now talking not of a British expansion but British India. British India means possession, British possession in India. Sir. Huh. What did they? Uh, what did they? What did they resist? Like did they resist arrest or like resist trade? Resistance mean like Nawab Siraj Ud-Daulah. You remember I showed you the video even that he didn't like the company. He didn't like the way they were doing yes, trade. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. 
army betrayed him and his arrest or like he resist trade no no he resisted their uh, look resistance is basically what opposition to someone right to an action that is called resistance right Is it clear or not? Clear, sir. No, the guy who asked the question. Um, yes, sir. Resistance mean that when you actually, what we call it, uh, oppose it, uh, refuse it to accept or um, oppose simply, refuse to accept or oppose. Now, what were Indian resisting? Indian were resisting British attempt to occupy India. So as when we call British expansion occupation, as I mentioned in, in, in here in the beginning, so that was actually telling this thing, like look, British were expanding, right? And expansion mean occupation of India. So did they meet any opposition? So we said yes. And that was called resistance by the Indian. When somebody comes to attack your land, so you fight back, back to them. So this is your resistance. You are resisting to their very action of occupation. Do you understand that? Excuse me. Can you hear me, guys? And particularly the guy who asked the question. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Now, what about the guy who asked the question? He asked the question and he's not confirming that to card it or not. Who asked the question that what does resistance mean? Is he here? Sir, Bashir Hussain Sayyid asked. And he's not responding now. Yeah. Okay. Sure, yeah. And oh, I what? Yes, I mean quickly. I was trying to explain it to you. My mic was stuck like it did. Oh, okay, okay, fine. So, uh, is it clear to everyone and you too as well? Yes. Okay. Now see, uh, now we are done with the expansion part, right? We have discussed the way British expanded, mean occupied India. And it was like a long uh, process because India was such a huge, uh, uh, I don't say a country, it was a vast tract of land, a subcontinent. So it took them time and uh, they met on the way of this occupation, many opposition, resistance, mean Indian fought back. But slowly and gradually they were able to uh, increase their their occupation of India and then it was called British India or British possession in India. So British India and they then passed law in here. So first law which British passed here was 1784, which was called Pitts India Act. And according to that, British government took over and called it British uh, uh, possessions. So Pitts India Act. Now afterwards, British government British government announced a whole set of uh, reforms, policies, or their own system to run uh, India, which was under their control. Is this clear? Yes. Look, yes, uh, the areas now which were which were called British India, governed by the British. So no government, no. Uh, you know, nation or no government, government can be there without a system. So now British, as they were uh, like from a different culture, language, their system and all that. So they introduced their own system, what they believe was the best. So that was called British reform, British policies or British government system in India, which was under their control. Is this point clear? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, the second very important point to understand, then you can actually 
grasp the entire next uh, topic. Initially, uh, as, as we have already discussed about expansion uh, events, and we see Nawab's, we say Nawab's Rajadola fought against the British. We say uh, that Tipu fought against the British. We say that Ranjit Singh fought against the British. Now, why we are taking the name of individuals? Because they were the rulers and they were defending their, their states. So rulers were fighting and rulers had their armies and all that they fought. But the local people, the general otherwise masses, they were part of it, but we did not talk about them that, okay, uh, what happened. So here actually, what we are going to discuss is that when British were expanding, they were challenging the rulers, and it was rulers' job to defend their states because those princely rulers were basically uh, the owners of their states, and mainly the masses, general masses. They were just like uh, what we get tenant there working. They had no big rights and all that stuff. So public was like indifferent. Ranjit Singh is ruling Punjab. What would make different to majority Muslim population? Because this Punjab and NWFP and Kashmir, there was like 90% around Muslims. And Ranjit, the Sikh ruler, was ruling. He defeated what then ruler, what ruler had, uh, people had to do with that. Do you understand my point? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, now yes. see, the, yes, point, the point here is very simple, that while British expanding rulers, those who wanted to defend their states and wanted to maintain their independent status, they fought against them and defeated. And then British went on to uh, introduce their policies and reform. Now, these policies and reforms in the areas which were under the control of the British, now with these policies people were directly affected like they introduced their own political system so people were affected they introduced their economic system so economic reforms were were going to have impact on the people general people now the rulers were over so now the people economic reform they introduced military the way they manage their military so military reforms so it affected the people they introduced social reform, cultural, social, affected the people. They introduced uh, religion, re the way they manage religion, so religious, so this affected the people. Uh, I hope you are getting the point what I'm trying to say here, that with these, this system and these reforms, now general masses, ordinary, communal people were, because this was implemented in that area, and they were directly affected by these reforms now. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, with this system, political, economic, military, social, religious system of the British in British India affected the commoners or the local people directly. And uh, slowly and gradually, what happened that people develop hatred against the British resentment against the British. Now this hatred and resentment against the British, we'll discuss what did they do actually under uh, under these like policies, their political or economic or military, social, religious, that how did it, it impact the people? But as I said that it impacted them. Uh, so obviously they develop a hatred and resentment against them. This hatred and resentment finally resulted in an other resistance by the Indians, and that is known as War of Independence. Now, War of Independence, we are not saying here that Tibu fought, we are not saying here that Nawab Sirajitola fought. We are saying that War of Independence was fought by the Indians. Indians, and this was not by one princely state, by one religion. This was by the Indians, mean Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, Christian, and they fought against the British. And this was the major resistance 
which were like starting from Battle of Plassey. This was 1857. So it was like 100 years. 1757, the first battle, Battle of Plassey. And this was the 1857 when Indian finally realized that British are like uh, the one who have occupied India and they should rise uh, up against them. So this is called War of Independence. Now, did you understand that why was there a War of Independence and why was it a uh, like a comparatively um, more wider resistance because all Indian participated in this uh, against the British and it is it was called War of Independence. Is it clear this this thing whole whole background to yes. Yes, sir. yes so war war of independence was basically just another resistance by the Indian, just another opposition by the Indian, a war by the Indian against the British of their rule in India, occupation of India. So the reason became was that this their, their policies, their policies mainly the way they ruled India, British India, resulted in hatred and resentment, and that resulted in war. And this was by the Indian at large. So that is our next topic, which is war of independence. This was basically continuation of the same thing, but treated as a separate topic. So now here we are to discuss what were the causes of the war i have already told you that these were the british policies but what we need to know now is that what were those policies basically what happened under politics or economics that resulted in hatred and resentment so whole concept is clear now we have to just fill in is it clear yes sir. okay now, if you can follow me on the book on page 27, I guess. Yeah, page 27, all of you, if you have a book with you. Page 27. Is, is, uh, are you what there? Were this, what were the causes and consequences of the war? Of the yeah, this is the chapter heading, causes and consequences of the war. You can see there the causes of the war is the heading, intro and all that stuff I've already discussed. Now, so you see political first one. Twenty-seven yes. page political heading. Do you see? It's written number one. Okay. Now, just follow with me. I will tell you the points, like what sort of political uh, development were uh, there. Our uh, teacher, Mujhe uh, Nukhmati, said answer work. Teacher, no jodi se answer. Our mom se break da. Our teacher break ma sir. Please, teacher, break ma sir. Please. Excuse me, who is this? Who is this? This was Kundi. Huh? Kundi? Uh, but what's, what went wrong? Because uh, I think we are still left with five, six minutes, yeah. right? Is it? Hello, boys. Uh, can rest of you uh, hear to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we still have five minutes, yes, right? Yes. yes, sir. I don't know what happened to if it was Muhammad Kundi, so what happened to him? But anyways, all of you listen to me. And OK, so political, uh, as I've already discussed with you, whole background and concept. Now you just need to know that this political, what reforms, what was introduced that resulted in hatred and resentment uh, amongst the Indian and they rose up against the British uh, fighting them. And that is known as War of Independence. So first thing you see, uh, already mentioned, we are discussed second line, Doctrine of Laps. Did you see this? Yes. So you can underline Doctrine of Laps and we have already discussed that 1852 British introduced Doctrine of Laps. Uh, it was to uh, take over uh, what Indian believed uh, that British were uh, greedy land grabbers and they want to take Indians land. And under this, they 
uh, seizure of Oud in 1856, so they took over Oud. And now Indian felt that they just want to take more and more land. So this is one um, thing happened. So this is this created hatred amongst the Indian or resentment amongst the Indian against the British. So are you following now? What what is it all? Yes, sir. Okay. Now see the second paragraph. It contains just one point that British emperor, those he had little power or virtually no power but still symbolically the emperor of india and you know emperors used to have a great respect and love uh, from the people uh, that was the like that was what the traditions or uh, culture of the day was so when he was uh, forced to leave red fort by the british uh, that's a royal uh, you know say residence and he was shifted to Qutub Sahib, which was a remote building comparatively, uh, less well known as written in the uh, meaning, obscure, uh, remote building. So people felt that their emperor was mistreated and they develop a kind of hatred. Uh, that is number uh, second point. Thirdly, uh, British, as I, I said that, uh, this political mean all sort of government system as well government system political mean so in government system british uh, did not give indians jobs they gave jobs uh, important jobs all to the british now area all area which was governed by them now was a massive area and uh, you know uh, government do employ a lot of people but Indians were just allowed uh, or given jobs of uh, lower ranks uh, that was like uh, just or the gardeners or these, these very low rank jobs were offered to Indian and uh, all other jobs were white collar jobs were given to the British. So the Indian were, were feeling this thing and they, they develop a hatred against them, against the British. and. Uh, this was this was done by them is it clear and uh, they also replaced uh, language persian uh, with english in 1835 so british introduced english as an official language so obviously most of the people became illiterate and english became the business of the state so they didn't have uh, i mean they were not like uh, they didn't know that language so all in all because of these measures that neither they gave indians uh, any opportunity in the government jobs and r running their government. Secondly, that was treated in the Google Emperor, Dalhousie's uh, this doctrine of labs and replacing English, uh, Persian with English. So this all resulted in hatred and resentment amongst the common Indians. And that finally led to the war of independence against the British. Is this point clear now? Yes, sir. OK. Now quickly we go through the social and religious. Social mean very simple. Social is basically our interaction in the society. We live in group, we live in, in, in communities, and in that group and community we interact with each other. Every society has a different uh, standards or uh, culture of interaction. Uh, it, uh, the many things play a role, your caste, your color, your religion, your status. Uh, even your physical uh, location, area, wherever. So this all is like social. Now, mean culture, mean way of life. Now, British considered Indian culture inferior. Number one, they considered Indians inferior. They consider Indians an inferior race. And secondly, Obviously, then how could they think of the culture superior? So culture also inferior. And British said, one of the British administrators said in 1835 that our, any yani European, one single shelf, single shelf of a library means this, this is your single shelf, or maybe bigger than this one. So maybe 100 books, let's suppose, too many, but let's say 50 books. So he said that one shelf of British library, European library, was more worth than the entire literature of India and Arabia. So this was their arrogance that he said that. 
like they have uh, they have nothing and they are inferior and british did not mix with them and plus they banned many of local cultures uh, practices so banned local culture so this all was bound to result in hatred and uh, resentment amongst indian isn't it right agree yes sir now if you uh, will take time so then you know we will take longer just one more point with this this uh, social considered inferior culture inferior ban local culture and then they introduced western culture in india western ways of life so obviously hated by the indian uh, with the uh, physical infrastructure changes as i told you that uh, your culture also depend upon physiology the way you live ji yeah i know but can i conclude this topic or uh, i mean this point just within 30 second if you had not stopped me i could have finished that okay western ways of life so all in all these me measures resulted in hatred is it clear to everyone so we are finishing here okay yes. fine i break is very uh, precious opportunity but once uh, sometime a minute or two is okay uh, so any any base we will start with religious uh, reforms of the british or religious cause of the war in the next class thank you very much take care allah face allah face allah face everyone allah face